Oh, yeah, we're starting. Welcome, everybody. This is the Life Enthusiast Online Radio and TV Network, restoring vitality to you and to the planet. I'm your co-host, Scott Patton, and joining us as usual is Martin Patella, health coach at Life Enthusiast. Hey, Martin, how are you doing today? It's a good day to die, grandfather. <laughs> okay, so we want to talk about the good and the bad of substitution. And everybody, well... If you've been Let's listening to us, talk about cravings, Scott. Let's and call it what it is. It's the cravings. It's the stuff that drives you mad. It's the stuff that happens after dinner, and you're running around, opening up every counter, ca- countertop or door, oh. looking for something that is not there. Hopefully, never mind. You're making your husband go get in the car and drive to the corner store and buy you a box of something pint of whatever well this started because in my facebook feed there was a link to a recipe and the recipe was the anti-inflammatory coconut and sweet potato muffin with ginger cinnamon and maple syrup recipe awesome and i love sweet potatoes okay i mean i could just eat a sweet potato a day and i've been trained to understand that uh, starches uh, are just another form of sugar and they're not really good for me. Uh, For my body type, they just go on to my tummy and it just goes bing, 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 bigger and bigger and bigger. So yes, I'm addicted to sugar. I admit it. And I work at uh, at minimizing. Let's, let's not use those labels. Okay. What label do you want to use? Well, you're Am I not addicted to sugar. Uh, I'm addicted to oxygen. I like breathing. You're addicted to nutrition because you need calories because you need to exist. Right? Your body says, feed me. I'm starving for energy. Right. But when I look at a lettuce and I look at a donut, I have totally different reactions. Oh, I like blondes better than brunettes or whatever. Yeah. That okay. is a preference. I, I would like to really explain that. Okay, let's talk about this. I'm not addicted to sugar. I have a preference for sugar. Yeah. So there are these that four, work? there are these four major endocrine dominance groups. Some people call it uh, body type. Some people call it endocrine dominance. That's the more accurate way. And there are these four. Either you are thyroid, pituitary, adrenal, and in ladies also gonadal or ovaries dominant. And in men. All men are gonad dominant, and their their endocrine is secondary. Anyway, the point is this: if you are thyroid dominant, you are the types like you and I are. Yeah, but you just said we're all gonad dominant. Well, okay, with a man, every man is first testosterone driven, and then secondary something else. Okay. With women, they actually only some of them are really clearly estrogen driven yeah okay but anyway these thyroid types uh this is people that are taller rather than short but don't have to be really long but are slender slender limbs like legs and arms if they start putting on weight it goes right on the belly like start looking pregnant or the little buddha beer gut yeah and um well, that's that's. And so each of these types have a look. Yeah, there's a physical shape, and there is a um, craving, and okay. the sweet or carb craving is the thyroid. Okay, so that's me. Yep, and me. Okay, so what's the other type? The adrenal type is built like a weightlifter, like a, in a football team, he'll be a linebacker. In a uh, female, it'll look like gymnast, like Sean Johnston, if you remember her from Dancing on the Stars, if you watched it, or Tina Turner was a good example of it. Okay. Stocky, lo- large calves, strong legs, built strong. Okay, the next one. Oh, and their craving, curiously, are savory and salty foods. Mm, like okay, would just as soon have a steak and. Salami than uh, than something else. Okay, so it's not just me. 
I mean, it's not just what I have. People have no, different cravings. There are different people. Like there are okay. people who couldn't care less about your craving for sweet potato. Yes, I know a few people like that. Right. And the third major one is the pituitary. And those people look a lot like a Cabbage Patch doll. The head is larger than it needs to be. And the body is equally plump, like the classic nerd look. You know, like on boys, mm -hmm. you will see they have a large head. They look like the nerd. They have fat all over, including their legs. And... Um, their cravings, curiously, are creamy and sweet things, like whipping cream and yogurt and, uh, and I don't know, creamy desserts. Okay. Well, I have that too. Well, so, and we are not... We're not 100%, so you're going to no, see yourself there, moving into these different there's, things. There's some of each in each one of us. I mean, we all have those glands. It's just that one of them is dominant. Okay, so when I'm making food choices, what I work at doing is less rice, less potatoes, um, less bread. Yeah. Uh, less, obviously less donuts and less sugary things. But I, when I look at those, those three um, foods, that's what I, what I notice is when I can really cut out those three, uh, the weight starts to drop off. You bet. And, yeah. Because the antidote, to weight gain for a thyroid type is fat and protein. So, so the thyroid type is the most underserved or most badly served by the nutritional advice received in the mainstream. The typical uh, food pyramid is the worst thing for me to eat, probably. Absolutely. Now, anything that's, you know, like fat to you and me and every thyroid around us is slimming. So skinny from fat, weight gain from low fat. So in the other types, they might put on weight from the fat. Yeah, the adrenal will gain weight from so this fat. Is, this is one of the reasons why things like the Atkins diet and the South Beach diet work for a certain group and not for other groups. Precisely. Yeah. That's so they go and they do a study and they pick all adrenals and they say, this is what works. Or they pick all the other types and i just know the adrenal one all the other types Thyroid. and they say this is what works and then they expand that to everybody when of course that's not at all the way it works right. this is you cannot extrapolate it's sort of like extrapolating that um well any any one thing right well so because like, you're the world champion baseball team you should be the world champion football team right and we know well, that they swimming. would just get killed yes or, or even further apart, like swimming versus running. Or chess champion. <laughs> even, yes. And pituitary make the best chess champions. Oh, because okay. Because they are the geniuses. The programmers of the world, the nerds of the world, are pituitary. Mm, okay. And their skinny food, if you can believe it, is the organ meats, the, the pure sure. liver, kidney, lung, heart, tongue, the most red of the red meats, like the, the most Atkins of the Atkins diet, like just going completely oh. against everything that you hear in the healthy uh, advice. Like right. they tell you, uh, you know, eat, well, whatever it is, to, a, to an overweight pituitary dominant, if they want to s slim down, they need to start eating red meat and organ organ meats hey, now, with, everybody, salad, with salad because you know all of us every one of us all types we need to eat vegetables right and that's actually what i was going to join jump right in and say is everybody needs the vegetables the question is what do you eat with the vegetables so this is this is we're kind of segueing into food combining yes some people should eat fruit some not so much. So I shouldn't eat fruit because oh, that's yes. a lot of sugar. No, no, yes, you should. Okay. It's not a lot of sugar. Let's understand let's understand the misnomer between sugar and glucose. Okay. Because the thing that makes you fat is glucose. And it's the glucose levels in your blood that matter. People call it sugar in the blood, but that's not it. It's glucose. 
So does glucose come from white sugar or? Well, so uh, sucrose, which is the white sugar, is actually a two molecule combination, one fructose hooked with one glucose together. And they hold together quite nicely, so they're actually not easily taken apart. Okay. Fruit is mostly fructose, which is at all not easily converted into glucose. Now that makes me really happy because we are in blueberry season. Oh, yeah. And I am like a bear in blueberry <laughs> season. Like That's three, three miles from here is a small little farm that this couple has owned for 30 years. They like retired onto this farm and there's like 25 blueberry bushes. And if there's about five pounds of blueberries per, per bush at any one time. And they pick and pick and pick for some clients of theirs. But, and I don't know how this sort of happened, but they let me pick there. And, and of course I pay for the blueberries. It's, it's a dollar fifty a pound, if you can believe it. <laughs> and so I go and I get two of these things and there's five pounds in each. We've, I've been doing it for a year and a half now and or two years now. And I'll tell you, between my son and I, 10 pounds of blueberries don't last two days. Makes sense. Yeah, like because I and I I know he eats it because I look and I know what it was like when I took my share and all of a sudden there's less. So um, okay. I think I'm a bit worse than him, but I just go like nuts for these blueberries. And of course, then I'm thinking, oh, they're sugary and everything else. And I'm, oh, and I'm no. feeling bad about it, but they're so good. And the fiber is excellent. Yes. So let's let's unpack it further. The thing that converts into glucose the quickest is the glucose itself, which, of course, you can buy glucose, but shouldn't. And then the second worst thing is starch. Okay. So white potato, white rice, wheat, corn. Uh, that's about the main list, right? Those are the easiest. You see, what happens is a starch is like three strings, three strings of glucoses linked together to a common center. And the, the length of it varies, like how many glucoses are strung together. But anyway, your digestive system very easily takes it apart. Snip, 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 snip. And there is glucose spiking in your bloodstream like crazy. Mm -hmm. So when you eat your donut or your cake, or your um, potato. Yeah, potato. Those are the spiking foods. So especially if you are one of the people whose um, digestive system is highly efficient at converting food into energy, those are the uh, fast oxidizers and parasympathetics, the people who just as soon as they eat that have a spike then it's followed by a uh, crash. No, hold on. By a insulin attack on that spiking glucose level, right? Like first you have the glucose arriving. Insulin, people think that insulin is the hormone that's supposed to reduce your glucose levels in the blood. But actually its true purpose is to create winter reserves. It's true oh, purpose fat. to convert free glucose into an adipose tissue, fat on your belly. Because I'm going to need it in the wintertime because there's nothing to eat. Because right now there's plenty of this glucose available, but will not be. Right. Aha. Uh -huh. So anyway, so here we have, we have this spiking glucose, insulin attacks it, and down she goes. And there's always, it, we always overshoot it and we crash so that's what you have, these zings, right? Yeah, obesity and crashing. Yeah. And so the antidote is, oh, my God, I've crashed. I need to take a candy bar. Right. I mean, they advertise it on television. You're not yourself. Have a something. Yes. Right? Arr, you're an ogre. That's right. Well, yeah. That's, that's actually when you're too acidic. And you need to alkalize yourself. You could do yourself just as much good by having a um, half a banana or a handful of blueberries. But this chocolate bar 
says that they're the only way to do it. Right. It's hard to fight the advertising. Yeah. Okay. So there we have the person who's the thyroid type. Thyroid has the energy addiction, sugar addiction, the spiking and the crashing and so on. And we need to feed it with not so easily converted foods. So the hardest to convert is protein. The second hardest is fat. And the third hardest is carbs. Carbs that are not starch. Carbs that are not starch, which would be like blueberries would have lots of carbs that are not starch. Yes, they're fructose loaded. Right. So just getting back to our anti-inflammatory coconut and sweet potato muffin, the sweet potato, I understood, was a pretty good starch. Well, it's it's a starch starch. The good thing about sweet potato is that it is not wheat. <laughs> so the good thing about potatoes is that's not wheat, too. Right. But one more important point, the white potato is also a nightshade to which many people are allergic or it causes joint pain and such. Whereas the sweet potato, the orange one, does not cause this allergic reaction. So it is in that wonderful sweet spot where it is very carby. So that satisfies the carb craving. It is not wheat, so it doesn't give you a gluten reaction and it is not a nightshade, so it doesn't give you the joint pain inflama inflammatory reaction that the potato will. So if you're eating the sweet potato, will you get um, a lot of glucose into your blood system? You will. Okay. And what they've done in that recipe is they're offsetting it with the coconut. Right, because that's one thing that you've told me oftentimes too, is if you're going to take something that's uh, – starchy or going to have lots of glucose, then you can actually balance it. So it's not, you don't necessarily have to not eat or never eat some of these things, yeah. but you have to eat them in combination with other things. Yeah, because you need to reduce the um, uh, glycemic index, right? Glucose, 100% glucose has the 100% glycemic number on the glycemic index. Steak has is a zero. Right. right. So if you had sweet potato and steak, then you're at 50% if they were the same amount. Right, right? Yeah, when you're combining it like that. And then coconut oil, of course, is a very, very good oil, a very, very good fat. Yes. So you combine that, and you're – so that's that's how this all works, right, in terms yeah. of the, the food combining. So, yes, so if, you, if you're going to use starchy foods, you must combine them with fats and proteins in order to bring the overall glycemic index down so that you don't blow your – circuits on going into that uh, glycemic shock, the insulin attack and all of that. So I just note, I can't help but see in the headline for this recipe, and we're not, I hope nobody thinks we're picking on this recipe, but it's just, we just want to break it out so that you go in knowing what you're doing. It, maple syrup. Uh, I'm assuming that has a very low glycemic index. Uh, not. <laughs> That's that's going to be, but it's probably going to be a fairly high in fructose. So uh, maple syrup is probably less offensive than sugar. Well, yeah, right. White sugar, obviously. But, even, but listen, even white refined sugar that I don't advocate, but say molasses, which is the or turbinado, which is the raw cane sugar, is the fructose glucose combination. So sugar as such is less offensive than starch from a potato mm -hmm. or rice. Most people don't realize that. Like the, the bad guy in your cake is the flour, not the sugar. Hmm. Okay, so let's talk about flour a little bit uh, because what I'm seeing in the grocery store, because – I don't seem to have a problem giving up pasta. I don't seem to have a problem giving up rice, uh, but I have a problem giving up bread. And so I look at it and it goes, oh, ancient grains or spelt or kamut or quinoa breads. And I'm thinking, well, that's not, there's no wheat in here or sprouted grains. Okay. So let's talk about those in a little bit because now are right. they the same as the plain old wonder white bread that, I used to get when I was a kid. Okay, so there's a big advantage in sprouted. 
there's this particular feature in all seeds, grains, and nuts, which is they have these protective enzymes that keep them from, that, that enable them to travel through the digestive tract of animals that eat them intact. So when they, when so they, they don't go, break down, when you, when go you send, well, when you send the seed through the cow, you want the cow to transport it to another place and deposit it. That's the purpose so that, of a seed. <clears throat> right. To start a new plant. All right. So it has these built-in defenses. These, they, they actually are estrogenic. They're called phytoestrogens. So they turn boys into girls, men into, uh, well, man boobs and belly fat, right? So that's why guys shouldn't eat it. So that's the difference between sprouted and not sprouted. That's the point. So sprouted bread is better than unsprouted. Soaked nuts, soaked seeds, soaked beans before you cook them. Those are all seeds, right? So if you want to have better testosterone level or prevent estrogen dominance, which causes cancer, you know, like the BRCA hormone that Angelina Jolie uh, got so freaked about and cut her boobs off because of. She could have just prevented it by eating, eating a diet sprouted. that is non-estrogenic. Now, that would be sprouted? Yeah, sprouted. Okay. Soaked, yeah. soaked nuts, soaked beans, sprouted grains. So you have to buy nuts that aren't pasteurized. Well, even a pasteurized almond could be soaked and uh, made innocent. Innocent. Okay. All right. So sprouted grains are better than just grilling the, milling the grain into a flour and using that. Right. Right. And then the next step is the carbohydrate. And it won't matter whether it was quinoa or, well, in case of quinoa, the relationship between protein and starch is a little it's better different. in quinoa than it is in wheat. Right. But big hoo-hoo. Yeah. Yeah, like 2% difference. Who cares, right? Right. Now, if you've got these old grains and you've got these new grains, is there any difference in that? Well, wheat is particularly bad since about the 1970s when they hybridize it hybridized it and created the dwarf wheat. Up until the 70s, wheat used to be about three or four feet tall. Mm -hmm. I remember and, walking in wheat fields in my farmer's farm, yeah. my uncle's farms in Saskatchewan. And when you were a kid, they, it was up to your chin, right? Yeah. Right. Well, these days, the wheat is only 18 inches tall. The main advantage of it in agriculture is that it doesn't fall over. That has been the major problem in harvesting is that they, they um, what do you call that? The stalk, or, stalk. Well, the stalk is the support. And then I can't think of the word that holds the grains at the top. Oh, I don't know. I know it in Czech, but <laughs> that was my <laughs> native. Anyway, so the wheat used to fall over. So it was a nightmare to harvest. So when they hybridized it, they figured out how to make it short. Also, in the process of that, they increased the gluten from about 6% to about 13%. Oh. They called it a major victory because gluten is the protein of the wheat. Ah, right? so we improved the protein of the wheat. Yeah, yeah. Major. It's sort of like putting a V8 engine inside of a Volkswagen car. Made a big difference. You can go like mad. Sorry, it's an out of balance situation. Right. It's, it's a. Uh, it's like it's sort putting of like, V eight engine in there, and it's a gas engine, but filling it with diesel. No, 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 not like that. It's just that it's too much of an engine in a tiny little car. Okay. Uh, I'm so thinking, a jet engine on a motorcycle. <laughs> sort of like that. Anyway, you doubled the protein, and since that time people have started having more and more problem with gluten. Now, I'm not 100% sure that it's that one thing only. It could be that it also has to do with the rising levels of other toxicity and 
and the use sure, of sure. the uh, nitrogen phosphate uh, whatever fertilizers fertilizers and who knows what else i mean it's a complex story the only thing we know for fact is that the more industrialized the agriculture the greater the inflammatory effect on humans okay so that's why you don't want to use new wheat so yes so move to italy where it is ordained by law that grano grain or wheat i should say has to be grown the old-fashioned way the old durham semolina hmm. Durham, it, was, yeah. it was a cra crazy thing i went to italy on a business trip there was nothing other than pasta and bread to have with your salad or whatever so i thought oh well three days i'll survive normally when i eat something wheat my face goes all red blue blows up whatever nothing happened nothing hmm. so i asked the host saying well what's going on why am i not having the reaction so he explained in italy we are not allowed to use imported hybridized wheat we're we're growing the old stuff so we're using the wheat that we used for 3000 years yes yeah, since the roman times and before yeah mind you the roman empire was the empire built on bread right that was their staple food that's um, what they their people that's what they handed out to the poor in rome ah uh, okay and it was easy to transport and didn't go bad that fast that's right and wonderful storage of energy hmm. oh too bad all right so let's pull us all back to uh to the recipe or to the cravings to the cravings if you're a thyroid dominant you are going to have starch cravings because your body is built that way it wants it you can prevent that and 8 p.m starving for carbs is what you didn't do at 8 a.m you didn't eat enough protein for breakfast mm. I've noticed that uh, one of one of our really good superfoods. It's a high protein. Like if you're an athlete, it's a great it's a great uh, product. Is zoatin. <clears throat> so since you started telling me this, uh, I changed from having iridesa first thing in the morning and zoatin a little bit you know, like later in the afternoon to starting off with zoatin. And I've noticed most days. Uh, so not 100% obviously, because I, but also I don't always 100% have the zootin in the morning either. Uh, but I've noticed like a significant difference in my feelings of cravings at that eight, nine o'clock period where I just feel like I got to go, 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 go. You know, I got to have some. That's wonderful. Yeah. So anyway, for you, our most other thyroid types, I would recommend fruit as a snack at the dinner because it does satisfy the sweet craving and it um, doesn't really wreck your health. And that's what's been happening late the last couple of weeks too with the blueberries now coming into season. A cup or two or three of blueberries after dinner. It's, it's the worst thing you can do is just put a bucket of blueberries on the coffee table, right? That's right. Whatever you're doing, it's just... Actually, I've changed my craving from opening up everything looking for donuts. I open up the fridge and I look at the box of blueberries and it's like, oh, there's only like eight left. What am I going to do? Yeah. yeah. And anyway, so you just put them out and you just peck them until they're all gone, right? Yeah. And well, and sometimes I'll just have 10 or eight and, and it's, it's, good. it's good. Yeah. The other right. thing that I've been doing, well, of course, I froze last year's and I still have a few... Uh, still have a few left in the freezer, but I'll, I used to take the, I don't now cause I have fresh, but I used to take the frozen ones and throw them in the zootin. And I just found that, yeah. that little bit of sweetness just made a huge bit of difference. You bet. Yeah. It makes it more palatable for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. Especially to a thyroid type, the adrenal type would say, Oh, what are you talking about? I make my smoothie with cucumber, celery, and kale. <laughs> And two raw eggs. And two raw. I can't even the thought of that just sends shivers down my spine. And yet, that is the perfect food for a thyroid type. Oh, sorry, misspoke. Adrenal type. Adrenal types. 
Right. Okay, so I know what the problem is for a thyroid type because that's my problem. But what if people who have adrenal issues or gonad? If, if they're an overweight uh, adrenal type, they have to get off of fat. So they need to cut butter and and coconut oil and whatever. They need to go steak and salad. You know, the salad with less olive oil and more whatever. I mean, anything they want to have. Chicken and salad or stir fry and chicken and uh, steamed vegetables and fish and, and steak is fine. Whatever, red meats are fine. They can handle it. Yeah, and you had said that the pituitary types, they need to eat a lot of meat. Yeah, red meat, crazy, but that's what works. They need to reduce the fat and the cream. They should have a, a low-fat yogurt for breakfast uh -huh. if they can handle dairy, which most of them can. Uh, if you can handle dairy, you should be buying the 10% yogurt. Yeah, 10 that's what I do. I buy the 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 plane and then i look at it and, and if it's on sale and it's like zero or two percent it's like ah no point forget in, forget, no point in me having that no it's just useless whereas to the pituitary that would be the right thing okay ha huh. well that's the story so uh, so we covered pituitary thyroid adrenal and oh, okay so in women there's this one extra type it's the um Ovary, ovaries, gonads, dominant. And what happens is they like spicy food and spicy food stimulates the ovaries mm. and it causes them to grow larger from waist down. Like in a young one, it will look like Jennifer Lopez, right? Yeah. You have, you have more in the hips and the tush. They just grow bigger. And so if it becomes too much, then the spicy food will cause them to just go too big. Oh, so the antidote, the antidote is to resist the spicy food and uh, eat more salad. So I know some people who are East Indian and they just everything is, I mean, curries, I mean, it's so spicy. And I'm not only thinking of two people in particular here, so I don't know that I could expand this to everybody, but they they would have, if they were go, gonad dominant, they would be, this would put weight on for them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it stimulates and it, it calls to you, right? So you just eat more. It stimulates the appetite. Hmm. Causes you to want more. Yeah. I want more. Well, and they're both, they are both overweight for sure. Mm -hmm. So that I mean, it's complicated, right? Yeah. And then, then menopause kicks in, this goes away, and they become a thyroid dominant. Oh, okay. Hmm. Cool. And they don't, they don't change their, um, you know, like a classic thyroid dominant will be in, in, like, especially in women, in their young years, they could eat anything. Un, you know, lots and lots of food, never gain, just fine. And then after having children or especially towards menopause, things just change. And uh, just walking past the uh, bread display in a bakery puts on half a pound. <laughs> okay. So I got the, I've got it figured out for the thyroid. You take the protein, your sugar cravings kind of dissipate. Go on. If you're the pituitary, what were you going to be craving? What will you be craving? Creamy things, creamy ice cream, so cream. cream, or organ meats and red meats, and that should go away. That's, that's your antidote, yeah. Right. And then if you are the adrenal, uh, you cut out the fat, and your cravings should start to go away. Right. Well, the, yeah, the typical craving is a savory, like a bag of potato chips, <laughs> which is both oily, salty, and carby all at the same time. Right. So yes. if we if we're eating our steak and salad then that craving should go away. That's right. So the, so the body is craving something. We're interpreting that this need, like it's a very hard need to, I mean, you can't ignore it, uh, wrong. Yes. Right? Like I'm going after the donut when I should be going after some protein. Yes, that's eight, correct. Eight or 12 hours earlier. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
But even you have when, to start somewhere, right? But even when you're there, right? So okay, so now I need something. Go for fruit rather than for um, uh, grainy, starchy glucose, right? Remember the difference between fructose and glucose. Right. Starch is not your friend. Fructose is quite all right. Right. So we need to just really sit down and figure out what foods are our friends and what foods are not our friends. Because the foods that aren't our friends, in addition to putting on weight, which we probably don't want to do and all the problems from obesity, is uh, is we're going to become more infla inflamed, right? Like, are we're, yeah. And what is inflamed? What is inflammatory? What does inflamed mean? It means my joints hurt. I, I got aches in my back or my tummy hurts or I have a headache or I have all, you know, it's these general chronic aches and pains that we've got. And they're coming from one of the ways that we get them is we're, you know, we're uh, in, we're eating the wrong foods. And so our body is not, it's becoming more acidic, less alkaline, and we've got pain. Right, that. And we don't need to. No, it's largely preventable. Self-inflicted. Right. Ignorantly self-inflicted. Through ignorance. Yeah. Through yes. ignorance, lack of education. Well, we've been educated about that pyramid, right? And it's not helping. Which was created by the industry. Like, not everybody should be eating like an Italian farmer. Right. The genetics don't support that, yeah. you know. Not everybody has had a grandmother from uh, Milano. You know, the, the, it's not just any Italian. It's the valley of the river Po, you know, that, that uh, Piedmont, that whole northern Ita Italy where it's the breadbasket of Italy. Mm. Like Sicilians eat very differently. No. Anyway. <laughs> so we're taking this diet from one little area of the world and we're telling everybody all over the world you should eat it. And we're wondering why Hawaiians, when they start, when they get off the coconut and, and fish and bananas and pineapple, and they start eating this pizza. diet, they blow up. Pizza pockets and calzone. Yeah. No. There are no cows native to Hawaii. No, that's right. <laughs> there are no tomatoes native to Hawaii either. Good point. Good point. So, right. All right, so there you go. You, we can handle our cravings, and we can. We now know how to deal with them. So, thank you, Martin, for sharing that. If you're interested in knowing more about, you know, because we're all individuals, we all kind of have our own individual quirks and things that happen. And you, I know for myself, it's been hard, kind of going on this, like, oh, I should I be eating this, and shouldn't I be eating that, and getting it all straight in my head. And then, of course, I get it straight in my head for a week, and then I forget. I go back into my old habits, and then I wonder, like, oh, now why have I got all these aches and pains, and not feeling very energetic, and everything else? And of course, it's because I'm eating the wrong types of food for my particular individual body type. And so, if you run into that same problem, uh, Martin is quite happy to. Uh, to help you out a little bit. So Martin, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you, uh, what should they do? Well, they can call 866-543-3388 or visit life-enthusiast.com and look up metabolic typing. Metabolic typing is the method through which you can readily, there's a test available online. It's not free, but it helps you determine exactly what you should be doing and why you can determine these things through trial and error too you don't have to spend money it's you can figure it out by uh, uh, stimulus and response analysis right yes and if you're in the fibromyalgia support group we have a seven day challenge in the description and you can that's a really good place to start because we're just saying okay try having less sugar one day or less dairy one day or no bread one day and see what happens to your pain levels. And of course, one day is not necessarily enough to give you the full picture. But if you try a day without bread and you go, well, I didn't feel as, you know, as painful, as much pain as I normally do, then maybe try three days and see what happens. And then you may say, well, if I don't have bread, I feel a lot better. So why are you eating it? And that could apply to any of the 
foods we talk about in the seven day challenge. Also, um, if you're on YouTube and watching this on YouTube, over in the bottom corner is a little subscribe button. Make sure you subscribe and then go back to some of our older videos because we have talked about metabolic typing and we do have videos on that as well. So if you don't want to read uh, at life-enthusiast.com, you can certainly go to our YouTube channel. And if you are on lifeenthusiast.com, uh, up at the top is a link, a little YouTube button that you can click on and you can go there so you don't have to like do this long search and try and find us. Uh, and I'll have it in the description. Well, I was going to say I have it in the description for the YouTube video, but you're on YouTube, so uh, you you don't need it. Um, yeah, so there's lots of information. There's lots of easy ways for you to learn this stuff and make a change in your life. So thank you very much for joining us, everybody. This has been the Life Enthusiast Online Radio and TV Network, restoring vitality to you and to the planet. Appreciate having you on the show with us and watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.